This is video three of our chapter four AP exam review. This continues the first question we talked about last time. And we have a question here that says, pull it up just a bit. We have a beaker that contains 500 mils of a solution in which both calcium two plus and barium two plus are present. So we have ourselves a beaker like so. And we have calcium plus two and barium plus two in the beaker. And the concentrations are given us as 0.10 for both. And a student intends to separate the ions by adding 0.20 molar of sodium fluoride. The reason you can do this is because fluorides are not soluble. These, remember, are the bandits. Fluorides are not soluble with these two bandits. So both of them will precipitate. Now, we're going to use a burette to do it. So we're going to slowly add it. They give us the KSPs for both of these salts. Calcium fluoride's KSP is 3,5 E negative 11. Barium fluoride's KSP is 1,8 E negative 6. The first question is which salt will precipitate first? Now it turns out, remember KSP is defined as products of our reactants, but for solubilities like these, uh, because we have ourselves a compound dissolving, a solid compound dissolving, it's simply going to be the product of the two solubilities. That's why it's called solubility product. So you got yourself calcium plus two and fluoride minus one, the second power, if you write out the equation as you'll see in a minute. And the whole point is the higher this number, the more of the salt dissolves. So since this number right here is lower, E negative 11 is quite a bit lower than E negative six, calcium fluoride will actually precipitate first. So calcium fluoride will precipitate. Uh, and the, if you take a look at the equation, let's go ahead and set up the equation for calcium fluoride dissolving. This would be the equation. Remember, this is a solid, so both these are aqueous. And um, the equilibrium lies far to the left. Most of it is actually the solid. Very, very few ions exist. W how many? Well, this number gives you the estimation of how much exists as ions. So that's why this is the better answer. Uh, the, the justification of your answer, you should say, because the KSP value is lower, so a smaller amount of ions will be existing in solution. Now they want us to calculate the minimum concentration of fluoride minus necessary to initiate the precipitation. So what will happen inside this beaker, we will actually be putting fluoride ions. <clears throat> now, if you recall, what we did is we set up the ice box. So let's go ahead and set up this ice box here. And the way we did, we calculated the concentrations. This would be a solid, so this won't really go into the equilibrium expression. And we began with these as zeros. And then we did minus x, minus 2x, and on and on. Now, in this case, we're actually going to modify it a little bit. And this is why this question is very difficult. The reason we're going to modify it is because in the beaker, I already have a bunch of calcium ions. So my initial concentration will not be zero. My initial concentration of calcium will be 0.10. And this is the difference. We're adding fluoride, not to just water. If we were to add it to pure water, then we can just do a standard ice box. But in this case, the initial is there. Um, you could say the fluoride ion is there because we're adding the fluoride ion to there. And now we're going to find what the concentrations are as we solve the ice box. So we're still going to do, we're going to lose from the product side as it dissolves. It's still going to lose from the product side. So minus x. Uh, so this is going to be minus x. Remember, this is minus 2x because of the 2 in front of the f. We end up here as being 0.10 minus x. This is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, plus x, not minus x. That we're subtracting x here. We are adding x because we're dissolving from the reactant side. We're adding to the product side. And this would just be 2x. Now to solve for x, essentially what they're asking us is how much F minus, the concentration of F minus, we're going to solve for this amount. And that will give us our, our uh, answer. So we're going to uh, solve KSP. Remember, KSP equals right up here, these two ions. So my KSP is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11 will equal products over reactants. It'll just be the products because the reactants are solid. So we have 2x quantity squared multiplied by 0.10 plus x. Now, if you try to solve this equation, you'll actually end up using the quadratic formula. They almost never have you use the quadratic formula on the AP exam. 
And the trick that we can do, recall, is we can remove this X. This X is so tiny that you can actually cross it out. So you can actually show it as being crossed out like so. It's leading. And you can do this, remember, whenever the X is three orders of magnitude different uh, from, uh, when your concentration here is three orders of magnitude different from negative 11. This is 0.10, this is E negative 1, this is E negative 11. We're definitely within uh, the range. So now uh, let's combine the rest of these together to solve for X. Combining them at 2x squared would be 4x squared uh, times 0.10. This will be equal to 3.5, <coughs> 10 negative 11. We're going to divide the 4x down here. Well, oh, actually, well, uh, we'll multiply the, we can multiply the point of uh, this. This gives us 0.4. So essentially, um, we'll, to solve for it, we'll go ahead and try to solve it. I'll shorthand it for the sake of space. x should be the square root of... 0.4 square root of 3.5 e negative 11 divided by 0.4. So if you just solve it, take a minute to solve it, um, and that should be uh, our answer. Now, if you solve for it correctly, you'll see that x actually equals 9.4 times 10 to the negative 6. This is x. Now, we're not asking for x. We're actually asking for the solubility of f minus, which is going to be this number, which would be 2x. So we'll have to end up multiplying this by 2. And um, 2x, or f minus, you can say, equals 1.9, 10 to the negative fifth molar. So this is the concentration at the point at which precipitation will happen. And we got it from that KSB. A difficult problem, yes. Um, so let's take a look at the follow-up. <clears throat> it says calculate the minimum volume of 0.2 molar sodium fluoride that must be added to initiate this precipitation. So the question is, we're adding 0.2 molar fluoride. So in here we're adding 0.2 molar. And we're asking um, at what point how many moles will achieve this concentration? Like how much uh, do we have to add of this in order to achieve this concentration in the beaker, the point at which precipitation will happen? So what we know is there are 500 milliliters in the beaker. Let's find out how many moles we would initiate precipitation. So uh, knowing the volume, knowing the molarity, we can find out how many moles will initiate this. Remember that molarity is moles per liter. So volume, liters, is moles over molarity. So we're actually going to solve for moles first. Moles is molarity times liters. That's right. So let's take our molarity times our liters. Our molarity is 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. Our liters is 0.500. So this gives us moles of, we zoom down here, we should get ourselves a fine number of moles, 9.35 times 10 to the negative sixth moles. And now we're going to use the, so this is essentially how many moles will initiate the precipitation in here. And 500 mils. And we took that number from that. And now, how many milliliters of it do we add? Well, we know the molarity of it, and we know how many moles we'll be adding. So to get the milliliters from the molarity, you want to solve for liters. Liters is moles over molarity, uh, which gets us, let's get color up. We got 9.35 E negative 6 divided by 0.20 which finally gives us 4.7, and let's uh, bring it here, 4.7 times 10 to the negative fifth liters. You can convert this to milliliters if you want, but that should be the final answer. This was definitely a tough um, calculation, very confusing possibly, so look through it again. Uh, the more important thing is for you to be able to get the concentration given the KSP value. That's really the gist of this problem. Given the KSP value, give me the concentration of your ion. They threw a bunch of things in here uh, to complicate it, but uh, hopefully that would make sense. Uh, let's answer the following uh, fa final one, part C. <clears throat> there are several ways to dissolve salts that have limited solubility. So for example, in our case, our calcium fluoride salt has really limited solubility, we said, because of the very low KSP value. So how can you dissolve more of this? Well, each of these is an equilibrium system. So we can actually switch the equilibrium to the right and dissolve more of it. A number of ways of doing it. Uh, usually, 
if you technically if you add water and because these are aqueous and technically what you're doing is you're adding water that's how you're dissolving it if you add more water it'll switch to the right because you're increasing the reactant and it'll go to the product side which makes sense uh, just adding more water will dissolve more of a, any substance if it has any type of solubility so you can add water now uh, you can also add heat uh, this is because uh, most of uh, the uh, if you think about this being an endothermic reaction because here we are breaking bonds uh, so heat would be a reactant because it's an endothermic reaction so if you increase the amount of heat it'll also go to the right now this is because most uh, things are more more soluble most compounds are more soluble at a higher temperature so you can increase the heat and that'll switch it to the right and the last thing you can do is you can because fluoride actually has an anion that comes from hydrogen fluoride this is a connection to our uh, unit over acids because this is a weak acid it's bit it's uh, conjugate the fluoride ion is actually a weak base so in fact F is actually a weak base which means you can add an acid you can add so we said heat earlier you can add acid and the acid will actually react with fluoride and free up the calcium the more calcium can dissolve so those are the three things you can do all right hopefully uh, this makes a little bit of sense think through them and come back with more questions in class